the link-up between Donald Trump and Alex Jones is a sign to many people. And after years of Alex Jones being the top social path the alternative media, the very best at sensationalizing aspects of some truth and then making something bizarre out of it, the very man that's been called the leader of the conspiracy theorists, conveniently the narrative pushed by the mainstream media to associate independent thought with Alex Jones. For years we've been wondering where all this is going. And with Donald Trump, the ultimate police state candidate, linking up with a guy that made four documentaries about the police state, I mean, you got to be out of your mind to be drinking that Kool-Aid. For years, people have been concerned that Alex Jones would stage his own death or disappearance or arrest. I've also seen him as someone that could be playing a role to amp people up for a war with the government, a war with police. He's worn different hats at different periods of his life. He certainly pushed the narrative that Russia is the good cop in this good cop, bad cop situation. There is no good cop. All these nations are involved and in bed with evil. Murder. I mean, there's just a lot of confusion as to the role that Russia plays. It's anything but a savior role. But it, it, it's by design for us to think that. That they're the lesser of the evils when it comes to these, these super state nations. And the new world order being built up in the east. Where is Alex Jones warning you about that? So, it's always been more than likely that he would play a role in the destabilization of the country itself. During a wartime situation. Maybe he would be a, a vocal figure. Encouraging people to join the military to fight the enemy of that particular moment in time. And he's, he's already started to do that with him and Trump going out saying that Muslims are the number one threat, number one issue. New World Order, that's off the table. Stage managed World War III, that's off the table. He's not the same Alex Jones. People are being led like sheep over a cliff. Those that are still listening to Alex Jones are followers. Many people have jump ship at different periods over the last few years. Listening to his voice could be hypnotizing. And there's no doubt in my mind that there are people that are hypnotized by the sound of Alex Jones. And I feel that ultimately, and I've said this to people for years when they've asked me in private, Alex Jones, or Alex, do you think that Alex Jones has sold out? And it's like, yes, but not necessarily to what you think. It may not necessarily be the CIA, but he's certainly sold out to himself. He's certainly sold out to megalomania. He's certainly has sold out to greed. He certainly has sold out to the, uh, the psychology of an archon, to being an authority, to being an expert, to being number one, super competitive, super domination mentality. And then, of course, you see the type of individuals that the Alex Jones personality draws. And having had many um, friendships in the past with Alex Jones listeners, and much more of a crossover between my channel and his in the past, things are much different now. And there are some very specific reasons why Alex Jones listeners don't listen to my content and why most of those that listen to or watch my videos, why most of them are not fans of the Alex Jones Show. There's going to be a little crossover because there's accurate information that we're both covering on each of our ends. And there's beauty in people being different. Ultimately, this is a very good thing for people to see Alex Jones in this light. Because it is important that people seek out their own truth, their own understanding of what is happening geopolitically. Or, for example, what happened with 9-11. In what specific ways has our country become a police state? Is it just the ways Alex Jones has said, or has he perverted some of that reality and looked the other way when perhaps he should have been raising the alarm? Now, there are many important causes, I will also say, across the board in this country, and across this globe. And for years, 
different groups in different countries have been marginalized as agents of George Soros. And I've never believed that this narrative is 100% accurate. I believe it's demonizing to genuine protesters around the world to say that they are co-opted. Especially when you yourself are co-opted. Is Alex Jones co-opted by private interests? The nuclear power plant industry apparently is one of those areas where he is co-opted for some bizarre reason. He's pro-nuclear power. And there's been certain things that you know, have been a little off about him and his associations that people just assume was normal free market or something like that. But there are special interests behind Alex Jones. However, a lot of the people that have lost themselves in the Alex Jones conspiracy rabbit hole, uh, there's a lot of people out there that have put out some crappy information. That is a wild goose chase. That has been less than accurate, in my opinion. With, with, with really looking at Alex Jones, the sociopath, the dominator, the control freak. The man that might be partially possessed. The man that could be working for other groups that we don't know anything about. So people have gone the easy way out. Way, way out. And we've seen a lot of focus on certain theories that have been rehashed over the years. And I would say an unhealthy obsession with whether or not he or his wife happens to be Jewish. I never agree with Jeff Rents doing whatever he did years ago when he put out something about Alex's wife. I mean, that was during the period where he had some association with Alex Jones. You know, we've seen some people that at one point were his friend or were working for him, employees working for Alex Jones. This is before the, uh, the confidentiality agreements were brought out and all his employees had to sign that. But in the, uh, in the era prior to that, period of 2006 and 7. Uh, we had people like Jack Blood come out and talk about aspects of Alex Jones, the madman. Jack Blood never scratched the surface, however. And I don't really want to get deep into that, but there's, there's a lot that is similar between Jack Blood and Alex Jones on a sociopathic end. That's why, you know, you're not going to get a wholesome, you're not going to get from someone like Jack Blood that on a level was a lot like Alex Jones and has that I know everything attitude. I'm a radio gun. I'm going to talk over you. I've got the radio edge. I've got the radio voice. I'm your I'm your navigator through this matrix, Jack Blood. Okay, I'm, I'm off topic. But I, I have found Jack Blood to be an asshole. I have also found Jack Blood to be a narcissistic asshole. So, you know, people have looked at the the Jack Blood testimony of working with Alex Jones as some sort of exposure. But until you really fully look at Alex Jones, the sociopath, from all the different angles, are you actually exposing him? There are people that have had their falling outs with Alex Jones that have gone to YouTube and gone on shows to air their grievances simply because they feel disenfranchised. Now we look at Mark Dice. He felt disenfranchised. Alex told him to fuck off. And perhaps some of the things that bruised his ego. So a few years ago, he, he went on a expose Alex Jones tirade to where he's just pissed off at Alex Jones. Mark Dice never really exposed Alex Jones for what he is and the evil that he's serving. Because Mark Dice serves that same evil as well. Who himself likes to put people down, including people that have been guests on the Alex Jones show. People like David Icke. A person that, for years, I have defended and have also been inspired by his work. In recent years, I've seen Alex Jones... Rather, David Icke take different directions, unusual directions, 
I have seen with the people's voice uh, some extremely poor judgment, a little bit of disrespect towards his supporters, I would say, that were asking questions about where their money went. And now I'm not the type of person to call out someone like David Icke who's put out a lot of good work. And I also said that I've had my concerns about Alex Jones for many, many years. It is only now that I am going to be putting out this playlist series. Fairly abstract, covering different areas. But I want to go beyond, to wrap up this thought, go beyond where Jack Blood has gone and go beyond where Mark Dice has gone. But also, again, to discuss where they were short-sighted in their criticisms. And in the case of Mark Dice, the backpedaling and the deleting of his Alex Jones exposed video series. Mostly focusing on the cult leader aspect of Alex Jones and attacking all the listeners and viewers as, as cult members. What's interesting, though, about this whole story is that, you know, Mark Dice, on his own, has brought in a, a sizable viewership. Alex Jones helped with that. Mark Dice, though, has a certain amount of talent, obviously, on his own, with the Man on the Streets uh, segments and skits. And some of his earlier videos, uh, where he went by the name John Connor instead of Mark Dice, using the Pink Floyd music and the 9-11 imagery, I thought those videos were amazing. And uh, really touched a chord with me at that time, and that was a time where I think a lot of us, I, I don't really like the term truther, but it was uh, early on in the game and, and within a few years of 9-11, and so there was a lot more unity. And I think that Alex Jones is also somewhat of a nicer guy back then towards newcomers, uh, people starting their own uh, television shows and uh, websites. Uh, he became a lot more cold-hearted and obsessed only with his own gain as time went on, and I think perhaps he had some people backstab him. I'm not just... I, I'm going to be fair to Alex Jones as a soul in this video series and not just throw him out to the um, to the wolves saying that, you know, he's the ultimate Satan, he can't be redeemed. Uh, I think that it's important that Alex Jones at some point hear what I'm saying about him and that I'm concerned about the direction that he's on that there's a spirit of evil that has a hold of him. When he, is, when he is pushing the narrative that he's pushing, the race war theology, the way that he is dividing humans on the planet at this time. Now, did Mark Dice really go after that Alex Jones? No, he got mad and he talked about Tingy Tangerine having lead, uh, aluminum, and arsenic. You know, the things that his, the Alex Jones water filters are supposed to uh, take out, the pure, the pro-pure water filters after years of promoting the Berkey filters. I mean, not a bad product. There's nothing wrong with having a water filter. Mark Dice comes out and cites some facts that he claims he found. Other people claim that that is legit. There's a rumor that Mike Adams uh, also found the claim legit. And that it, there's a rumor that he parted ways with InfoWars relating to that. Perhaps other things. Alex Jones has a lot of falling outs with people that uh, haven't completely uh, sold their soul, so to speak. People that have a little bit of their own humanity retained. You can see the falling outs with former Alex Jones associates, employees, and guests. And you can see which ones remain over time. But anyway, Mark Dice took all those videos down when Alex Jones brought him back on as a guest, showing Mark Dice allowed himself to be bought. He showed his true colors to someone that was just simply pissed because he wasn't getting enough attention from Alex Jones. And, and I've seen people act like babies and be very demanding of Alex Jones for certain things. So I can understand, again, not to apologize for him, but... This isn't just 100% attack, attack, attack. I understand Alex Jones has been backstabbed, and I've been one of those individuals to defend the good deeds of the great Alex Jones for many, many years. More than Alex Jones actually knows of. Many years taking the hit 
Oh, you're associated with Alex Jones. You remind me of an Alex Jones. And for years, I must say, being heavily influenced by some of the language and then using it, uh, giving it my own spin. I think that pissed Alex Jones off. I think he saw competition. I don't think that I'm at the level to compete with Alex Jones to do a show, uh, you know, that long every day. And I don't think that was ever my goal. Um, I wasn't really going to get into this now, but I'll say briefly, I felt spiritually that we were really brothers in spirit, like many of us are, in this fight against this Eye of Sauron, New World Order. I didn't know then that the guy had the obsession with being number one and controlling everything and being on top and and doing things to knock out his competition or or tell people don't don't have this radio show on or or we can't be business partners there's lots of stuff there's lots of stuff you can find out about on your own so i didn't know that in the beginning and i promoted his work and tapes wherever i went because to me and I still do feel this way, although there are, there are other issues that have my focus in recent years. To me, it's very respectable when you come out out of the gate swinging right after 9-11, that there is another truth. And that's why. And that's why the megaphone in the street made sense to me. And I did it myself. Dozens of times. I invaded the port. I, I got a megaphone for an emergency underneath the bench that I'm sitting on in this RV. But do I think that it makes sense to run around nowadays saying that? No. Do I think that that was the time to do it? Yes. Do I regret it? No. Now, I do think that 9-11 is a much bigger situation. And I think that China and Russia are involved in the cover-up. Okay? I believe that it's a global cover-up. I don't believe it's just a U.S. inside job. I want to make that clear. Otherwise, you would have seen uh, you know, a more... Um, vocal reaction from China and Russia. Like, wait a minute, you're going to invade the Middle East over this? No, we're not going to fund your wars. No, you're not going to just send us your steel so we can melt it down. We're going to investigate this shit and hold you accountable. You didn't see that happen because they were involved in the cover-up. And if anyone watching this video right now has additional information, um, put it in the comment section. Perhaps all the documentary films, all the quality information has not really been put out in full. And there was some questionable information put out in the early Alex Jones 9-11 videotapes. There was also some tremendously important information <clears throat> that came out then and, and things that were produced by what I will refer to as the old Alex Jones before the new one walked in. Phenomenal stuff. America destroyed by design. Why does Alex Jones not cite his own videotape that talks about stuff that's kind of happening now? Again, something happened with Alex Jones along the way to, uh, to where he is now. Something happened to that guy. But there was always some a little screw with them. All you got to do is listen to the Y2K broadcast. The one time he 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 is not pro Putin, he's saying that Putin is a demon. And I'm wondering if Alex Jones is coked up on that uh, New Year's Eve broadcast, saying the Russians are attacking. No, I'm not. I'm not drinking the Russian Kool Aid. That Russia is actually outside the New World Order. I think it's all theater. I understand most people don't uh, believe that. But I feel that Putin's going to play a major role in the, um, in the World War III scenario, in the invasion scenario in America. That aside, um, for those of you that, are, um, that see Russia as outside this new world order system, but you're also critics of Alex Jones, you've got to see how he's given Putin a pass. And how backwards it is for the moment for him to say that Russia could be a threat, this Putin guy a demon. He's talking out of his ass. Whether he was on a substance or not on a substance, the dude was out of his mind that night. Was that an actual test to see if people would respond? Now for years, William Cooper has been, um, he's been like a messiah-like figure. 
I think, to certain people in the alternative media that have been looking for, uh, and on the web, truth about Alex Jones. William Cooper was not without his faults and problems in his personal life. We'll just leave it at that. Having done my own little research into all that was publicly known to be going on with William Cooper in a state of mind in the last several years of his life. I mean, there are conspiracy theories out there that Alex Jones killed him or had something to do with it, you know, over who would have the, the claim to predicting 9-11. I mean, it gets out there. That's what I meant by there's a lot of uh, wild goose chases with the Alex Jones is a conspiracy uh, a paradigm. And I think that the video series that I'm doing is there to shed greater light on Alex Jones may have just simply sold out to evil itself, his own inner demons, lower self, inner archons, and perhaps there could be other intelligence agencies that are influencing things on a worldwide level that you know nothing about that he is working for. It's not just what people think CIA, Stratford, Israel, in my opinion. It's something else. It's something else. And uh, we, we can see questionable things from Alex Jones over the last decade at least and go, well, in a world where there sure are a lot of Secret Service visits to people that have posted things on Facebook and whatnot, they sure do seem to have left Alex Jones alone. And he also admits his close ties to Google and YouTube, and that plays a role when you look for certain topics on the internet, trendy and conspiracy, New World Order, Agenda 21. It's all going to be funneled to the Alex Jones channel. I mean, I'm looking up certain topics. I'm looking to see what other people are saying about the, uh, the Donald Trump, Alex Jones um, team-up. And so much of it is linking back to the Alex Jones channel. In like some weird loop after years of, oh, YouTube shutting me down. Obama spying on me. Obama's coming after Alex Jones. Folks, I might die. They, they literally mar might murder me. I can't tell you we're going to make it through this. I swear to God, they're trying to kill me. And then, you, like, but you see in the real world on the internet, brass tacks, what is reality? Has Alex Jones been censored? Or is he, like, conveniently at the top of a heap? And how is Alex Jones the best that there is out there? He's one of the hardest working. That's not even disputed. Who does three hours a day, four hours a day? You know, as, as far as, is there additional funny behind the scenes? That's another question. But there's no doubt that he's been a hard worker. But, you know, on the topic of the money behind the scenes. You know, I'm going to openly share my speculations. I'm not going to say, this is the absolute truth. Alex, answer, he has the absolute truth. No, that's bullshit. And there are way too many people out there sending people on Alex Jones conspiracy goose chases. I'm going to keep this real. I think one of the greatest opportunities for Alex Jones to be, you know, receiving large sumps of, of money from perhaps many unknown anonymous sources are during these money bombs, where people may be thinking that all that's just organic from, you know, the demographic that we think is listening to Alex Jones. Those could be the perfect opportunities for Alex Jones to get those boosts from those mysterious donors that could be donated with those uh, anonymous accounts or PayPal or Bitcoin. There's many ways to donate nowadays. You know, GoFundMe and, and all the other different ways. Uh, I, to date, have never set up a GoFundMe or Indiegogo account. Um, not like there's anything wrong with that. I think it's... Um, I think that there's nothing wrong with raising your own income doing your own thing or running your own show. Uh, we are in a day and age where things are possible now that were not possible before. People also have the right to do what they want with their money. Uh, but when we look at the sales, when we look at the products he's selling, you know, I don't know if any of that is really true about the lead arsenic. It's low levels in the tangy tangerine, but notice how that product kind of vanished out of thin air. Notice the type of, it, the advertising for his products seem to function as a form of mind control. Like we're going to program you to um, 
accept the absurd concept that Alex Jones just lost weight here. Here, let's show you something with Alex Jones with his shirt off. And then, of course, after years of the photoshopped Alex Jones being whiter than he actually is, I also noticed that in, in the Infors magazine, not to play up that element too much, the potential white supremacist element that is now more alive and flaring like never before with his association with Donald Trump, who's been a huge magnet for white supremacists, really for the first time in what we, I, I can see in my lifetime, a real fascist call to action with Alex Jones turning turncoat, red coat, <laughs> in, in, in a way that I've never seen before, in a way that I did not predict this soon. I do see Alex Jones photoshopping himself to be whiter than he is. I have seen Alex Jones this entire time uh, play that role of white Christian America, I am your savior. I have the information. I'm doing this for you, bro, bro. I'm doing this for you. And then we see Donald Trump doing the same thing, other presidents doing the same thing, like using the techniques of presidents, also Alex Jones and his advertising department, magazine department, using symbolism. I mean, we could talk about the V for victory campaign. We could talk about, I don't know what his upside down cross is. I want to be as precise as possible. There was a video years ago someone produced about some of the symbols, Freemasonic or other occult symbols, on the InfoWars logo. And so, from the logos he uses, from that almost, like, it, it, it's like an alien gray head, it's like an almost bulb, you see it when they take pictures of the presidents, like, ooh, Obama with the halo. Well, with the Alex Jones studio, post-2007-8-9, with the, the monitor behind him, I've never talked about this before, he's constantly throwing out, like, the, and, and he does this a lot too, by the way, even though InfoWars was all big into, you know, exposing presidents doing this. He does this a lot. He he does what some people call the 666. Now, I do this a lot, but I think it's just an unconscious thing when you talk like this. But perhaps that unconscious programming comes from somewhere else. I, I don't know. I'm really trying to keep this rant on point and not on planet Pop-Tart, so to speak, with with wild goose chase theories that really go nowhere, a rabbit hole where it just spins and spins, because we really want to understand what's going on with this guy. And I do see him using imagery. Uh, there is an allegation that he used a, a subliminal, be afraid, in Police State 4. That there's that, whether Jason Burmis himself did that, or someone else did that, someone involved in the production of Police State 4. According to this one video I saw that was very compelling, there's a subliminal that says, be afraid. What other subliminals had Alex Jones used? Uh, what was the whole V for Victory campaign really for? What about the other symbols? What about you know the stuff he's got going on in the monitor behind him? Constantly the devil ears. For years on his broadcast, he, he's been showing the subliminal of the devil ears and Obama the devil on the monitor to the side. It's like, who's making that decision? Is Alex Jones just, I mean, I understand there's a little bit of brilliance there. I've seen brilliance in other talk show hosts, but I've also seen darkness too. Full brilliance and being super intelligent and a super brain and having a photographic memory. And being able to brand stuff is not necessarily uh, positive energy when you're deceiving people. And you're lying to people. And you're creating some weird pop culture, conspiracy pop culture, uh, entertainment thing out of it. Of course, with Jesse Ventura, uh, a performer himself, still connected to the satanically controlled WE. All that's also very relevant. Especially when you got Jesse Ventura coming on the Alex Jones show saying Trump is right. So you all are going to fucking turncoat and say Muslims were dancing on 9-11 in New Jersey. When, for everybody that's been researching 9-11, the, no, the story is the dancing Israelis in New York. You guys know that. You guys know that. But for some reason, it's convenient now to say Muslims were dancing on 9-11 as if we're going to go back to the day of 9-11 where it's like literally 
the drum beats to war. The drum beats to war. And that's why all this is coming out. Because for years, it's like in my mind, I gave him leeway. Maybe the guy is just so full of himself that he can't see that he's wrong about some of these things. Maybe he really wants Russia to be the good guy in this, you know, supposed good cop, bad cop scenario. Maybe he really does believe some of this stuff. But the more I look at this, and the more I look at uh, Alex Jones and the old Alex Jones versus the new Alex Jones, not that the old Alex Jones wasn't without his problems. Uh, in a future video, we'll talk about some of the things that we know he's been involved in, way he, ways he's been uh, behaving in public. Uh, from the Michelle Malkin incident, where he in reality pushed her bodyguard, uh, to uh, the Austin gun situation, uh, to many other things that have happened on video with Alex Jones in public. You know, because he's a human being. People, you know, uh, come under stress. Sometimes they come under a psychic attack. Now, some people don't know what that is. And there is such a thing as psychic attack uh, that operates within the world of spiritual warfare that isn't necessarily coming from the government, i.e. gang stalking. Uh, there's something else going on. And when you are dealing with a little bit of darkness in your own life, but you're out there acting like you're going to take on the New World Order, but you are completely vulnerable to being co-opted by your own evil, to being bought off by the spirit of evil, I mean, someone doesn't necessarily have to show up with the package. You can literally end up working for the dark side. You can act like you're pretending to show people um, you know, what you think is going on with the New World Order when you do Satan Speaks, or when you dress up like Darth Vader, or when you dress up like the Lizard. Uh, what Alex Jones is really doing is, is showing us, like the Vince McMahon of WE, who is the devil of uh, so-called professional wrestling. Alex Jones comes out, acts like he's imitating them. He's imitating J.P. Morgan. No, that's a part of him as a spirit. He's coming out Alex Jones predictive programming style, and he's like, yeah, I'm a control freak. You know, he does a video where he's shouting at Aaron Dykes, and no, you can't have this in the fridge. I'm a control freak. Yeah, that was actually the real Alex Jones the real control freak at the office of InfoWars. There's a reason why Aaron Dykes, Melissa Melton, others don't do interviews about working, and they've done a good job. They have definitely abided by their contract agreement because Alex Jones puts the fear into them in a real genuine way to where they don't fuck around. Former Alex Jones employees do not speak out about what he's really like. Now, it is. It has been said to me that Alex Jones has come across as schizophrenic by a former Alex Jones employee. And there's just a lot of other things there that people just don't want to talk about. And sometimes my intuition fills in the blank and I, I could see the Alex Jones, the real Alex Jones, behind the scenes there in the studio. And perhaps certain things that have happened late at night that other people may have walked in on. I, I, I don't know. I can only speculate. But because it is pure speculation, there's no need to repeat things I've suspected about the real Alex Jones. What I will say is that I've seen my intuition about a lot of things. Uh, I have seen... I've seen verification... In many ways, things I thought were happening or were going to happen, things going on either with people, myself and people, or things in the world, I, I don't have a crystal ball. But uh, at this point in the game, with where our, uh, the, the direction our country is headed in this new fascist direction, seeing a person that actually inspired me, along with a few others, not him alone, but he, he, he was the driving force, at least 50 percentile, and then also powerful uh, other human spirits that I have uh, come across in my youth also inspired me to not be afraid to go out there, start my own Access TV show, which I no longer host. Uh, right now I'm just doing the YouTube channel. Right now I'm inspired to do a lot more YouTubes than I've ever done before. Being more real than I've ever been before. And not being afraid of the consequences 
and I do feel that the things that I'm saying are going to piss some people off. And I'm going to have to be okay with that. And I'm going to have to keep this video series going. Because it's important that people heal from the damage that Alex Jones may have inflicted upon them by programming them to be afraid of certain things that in reality this whole time, maybe they didn't need to be afraid of. You know, it's one thing to be aware of the New World Order and to prep. It's another to be in a fear psychosis to where all you do is listen to one person who programs you with a certain worldview. And in the end, <clears throat> what you oftentimes have are people that have become so scared that they don't even take any action whatsoever. They don't even really get prepared. They don't get property off-grid. They just stay in front of their computer and they consume and they consume and they consume all this media. And so we've been, we've been seeing a whole group of people sort of fake bill of goods. Just like, well, vote for Obama. At least it's not Bush. Listen to Alex Jones. At least that's not Fox News. At least it's not CNN. Only to see the motherfucker with Trump go at a whole level beyond Fox News. Now, Bill O'Reilly doesn't have genuine compassion for Muslim immigrants, Syrian immigrants. But there he is on Fox News saying to Lou Dobbs, who's for the total ban on Muslims? And the whole statement until we figure out what's happening. I, I thought you already knew what was happening. That ISIS was being funded by U.S. intelligence agencies. There's a reason why Alex Jones won't call him out on that. There's a reason why Alex Jones won't call out Trump when Trump says he predicted Osama bin Laden taking down the towers. Only in a madhouse... would you have a situation where you got the guy saying, I predicted 9-11 the inside job, promoting the guy saying, Muslims were dancing in New Jersey. We may need to ban all Muslims coming into this country because of this terror threat. And then Mr. Everything is a Conspiracy, false flag terror, false flag terror, and there is a great deal of false flag terror. To turn around and say the Paris attacks were not a false flag. And to say in other examples, oh, it was a false flag shooting. But ISIS is still a threat. So Muslims are a threat. ISIS is a threat. But ISIS, out of the other side of your mouth, is fabricated by the uh, U.S. government. Also, after the Donald Trump interview, Alex Jones puts out a video acting like he didn't endorse Trump. Like, you know, he's aware of, like, you know, he has to at least... Put out a video acting like he's somewhat fair and balanced. Well, I like Ted Cruz. He had all his Goldman Sachs connections. Is that it? Or oh, I, I still like Ray and Paul. You know, before I was like 50, 60% Trump. Now I'm like... And, and then just going around in circles, not even really being clear about his position. Alex Jones, you were clear about your position. There's no backtracking from doing an interview with Trump and saying, the Muslim threat, that's the number one issue. The number one issue, yeah, the Muslim threat. Okay, economic collapse number two. If we don't get Trump in, Trump, I just want you to co-sign what I'm saying. Shit's hitting the fan. There may not be a, a 2020 presidency. But don't even get me started on this Adam Kokesh freedom fuck train. I mean, don't even get me started on this fruitcake that actually admitted to torture those that admit to torture in Iraq and those that blindly follow them. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They know not what I of Sauron they actually serve while using their media platform to act like they're against this draconian control system. I mean, this is a study. The person called the leader of the conspiracy movement, Turnscoat, and is seen in this chapter of time as more extreme than Fox News. All Muslims are a threat. Number one issue. This is following. 
This is following, of course. It's, it's like it's like Alex Jones is doing what he's doing on some sort of a, a, a timeline. Like, like we want you, Alex, to do this, this, and this, and we'll put you on TV with Pierce Morgan, and we want you to act like you're on steroids. We want you to be the poster child of why we want to ban guns. So, Mr. Leader of the whole Second Amendment, Alex Jones, we need you to go on TV and act a fool, flip your shit, and come across as a fanatic to the whole world. Yeah. And you know what? After that, we want to pair you up with this guy named Joe Biggs. Stars and staff, Joe Biggs. One of the fakest reporters. He's like a dark Jack Blood. And I don't mean like color. He's like a darker energy version of uh, Jack Blood. Radio gun. And you got this Joe Biggs saying there's an ISIS base in Mexico. And I know a guy that actually for, for a living, now that he is disabled, he was shot by an American while serving in Afghanistan, he analyzes ISIS threats for travelers that go to Mexico and places like that. So he does this for a living. He, he tracks the supposed ISIS threats that are out there that the real military, the real intelligence community is talking about. There was no ISIS base in Mexico, according to people that already believe that ISIS is real. Are you following my train of thought, viewers and listeners? Are you following me? I sure as hell hope so. I hope to God you're able to follow this train of thought as we're in 41 minutes into this video. What does that say about InfoWars? You're fabricating stories about ISIS in Mexico. You fucks! I mean, Paul Joseph Watson looks possessed by demons, by archons. I'm sorry if that's going too far. You take a guy, a young guy, an intelligent and brilliant young man who's been one of the best authors in the entirety of the internet history, and somehow, through your money, you turn him to where most of his reports are about Muslim immigrants gang-raping European women, white women, as if that's the top story of the planet? I mean, creating hysteria? Actually writing articles that play into the KKK Albert Pike handbook as we see this rise in genuine racism in this country, in Europe, how about Red Ice Creations? Henry, man, you're another one. Just like Rents. You used to put out good stuff back in the day exposing this new world order using divide and conquer. And y'all motherfuckers can't see divide and conquer with the Middle East now? Jeff Rents comments, you know, in his little news section, Syrian immigrants come across the border with lipstick Yes, with lipstick, dumb motherfucker. There are plenty of Muslims, whether you think they're bad Muslims or not, that wear makeup. I've known this for years. You can see the evidence on Facebook. But answer me this. How do you know whether someone's Muslim or not? How do you profile them? If Americans were honest about where they're taking this, they're seeing that this is the ramp up for a race war. They can do roundups based on last names, based on internet activity, uh, ISIS accounts run by the U.S. government. I mean, what if they have something where they start adding people on Facebook, these ISIS accounts, but no one really knows that's ISIS, and they come out and go, well, this person added you on Facebook. They were connected with you. You like their post, or they like your post, or something bizarre like that. There's a reason why more people are shutting down their Facebook accounts. They're afraid of setups by the government. You also, I've talked about this for years on OTB TV. The thing that we identify to be surveillance, it ain't just about the NSA. We have a whole system set up now, a grid, where foreign surveillance by foreign nations like China, it's more possible now than ever. Cyber attacks, and you think the White House is going to come to the aid? of the American being targeted, and there's something else going on with cyber warfare. And they can use foreign governments and foreign hackers to take down 
the internet here to get rid of information that's on the internet. Which is why I recommend that when people do research, you don't just assume that stuff will always be there. Start folders. Download content. Download articles. Build up an information database. Act as if you only have a few years to get the really important information off the web before it goes dark. Just to be prepared. So with Alex Jones being like the number one go-to person for a lot of people looking for information about the conspiracy, he's there. Even if someone's trying to avoid Alex Jones, he's there. If someone doesn't know any better, and they're going to get pulled into his nihilist world, world view to where the only aggression militarily on the planet is the United States and Western nations. They'll get pulled into a world view that we're all going to die. He doesn't do that as much anymore because you can only do that so much before people just drop out. So he's dropped certain, certain narratives. I mean, yes, slow kill. Slow kill weapons sterilization, stuff in the food, stuff in the air. Some of these things aren't disputed. What is disputed is how much time we have. You can go back and you can listen to the 2008 broadcasts, the 2009 broadcasts, and even though there were obvious lies surrounding the official story about the, uh, the uh, origins of swine flu, and there were executive orders they passed, and we saw this in late 2009. Obama signs an executive order to take over freeways and whatnot in the event of an outbreak, and then it all went away. But in the Alex Jones narrative, I mean, forced vaccinations are coming, no matter what. And there were drills that I was reporting at the same time, saying the same narrative. And I saw that that didn't happen. Now, they got their agenda through. They got their executive order signed. But the mass kill event, Camps for those that don't take the shots. None of that shit went down. Lindsey Williams, 2012. You won't recognize America in 2012. And I'm like, th th this stuff don't sound legit to me. I think that there's a long-term plan. And what he's saying is accurate with China in the 2020s. I mean, I mean, but people don't go, oh, wait a minute, we've been lied to about all these different things. How much has it just been Alex being short-sighted and how much of it has just been literally like others I've seen, and there's only a few people on the planet that are this driven. Clyde Lewis is another that is driven, I would say, towards the dark side to keep it as entertaining as possible, as sensational as possible. Clyde Lewis' show, Ground Zero, I often refer to it as the Haunted House radio show. And being familiar with some of the content on the Ground Zero show with Clyde Lewis, and he is a former friend of mine. I, I have, uh, you know, I don't really want to talk about him now, but I've seen the social path, the dark side, the inner demon, lower self, archon, uh, the inner witch uh, that dabbles in magic. I've seen all that in Clyde Lewis of Ground Zero Radio, and has, he's used those elements and his law of attraction to bring himself wealth and a sense of power. At the moment, while his health has suffered and his relationships with his true friends. I was a true friend of Clyde Lewis at one point before the, this whole thing, thing of power and being back on the radio turned him kind of into a monster who is serving the agenda of those that want people afraid. He's literally had Anthony Hilder on, someone that I uh, at one point knew very well, who kept saying to the audience, be afraid, you're going to die, be afraid, you're going to die. Clyde Lewis would criticize Alex Jones for years, which I didn't understand because I saw him as being very much like Alex Jones, and now I realize it's just about competition and market share. Funny how someone relaxes a little bit once they get back on the radio, and they're speaking to people, telling them to be afraid, be afraid, be afraid. Meanwhile, they, they're thinking that they're helping people, but I think that they're being used by dark forces to keep people in victim consciousness, in slavery, in the grid, buying their products, listening to their show, literally being affected by the subliminals that are out play during these broadcasts, whether those hosts know it or not. How does Clyde Lewis know that people aren't being affected through the radio, through subliminals? 
As far as YouTube, YouTube without a doubt uses subliminal. So whatever you're watching, including this, you could be affected by something. So it's important as we wrap up here, this video, that people understand there is a conspiracy, but people need to learn to think for themselves and know why there's a conspiracy or how there's a new world order. They need to know for themselves. As, as, as the, the power drops here in the RV, how or why 9-11 was an inside job or other deceptions taking place. They need to be able to answer those questions for themselves. <clears throat> when someone is in a state of mind where they are literally uh, conditioned to only listen to a particular talk show host, you have a situation where they are vulnerable to being influenced to the dark side. Um, I'm going to wrap up these thoughts now. Uh, this is this is a very important series to me that I that I discuss these things that for the most part I have bottled up inside me all these years all these years because when you speak out against the establishment in this sense or Alex Jones in the alternative media uh, there are consequences but because I've already been dealing with some of those consequences from things that I've said in the past at this point it's gloves off time at this point, it's really in my best interest and those watching this for me to keep talking and discussing this level by level because it's important for people to deprogram from however Alex Jones may have influenced them. You know, once you can understand that they call it programming for a reason, then if your mind's been co-opted or influenced by belief systems that are meant to keep you in a state of slavery. Once you identify that's going on, you can begin a process of healing. And you can begin a process of seeing the conspiracy for what it is, for yourself. You begin a healing, therapeutic process of seeing reality for what it is, for yourself. And ultimately, coming to a deeper awareness as to what you're doing here in this matrix and what kind of a matrix this is. As you ponder your own connection to the, to the true supreme being of all that there is and ever will be. I'm Alex Ansari signing off from northern New Mexico. Thank you for watching.